let's get the Jacobin and let's get Richard Medhurst, okay? Jacobin is going to take the side that Jimmy Dore is an asshole. We can't do Medicare for all. Shut the fuck up, Jimmy Dore. Jacobin is on the side anti-Jimmy Dore, probably pro, you know, forced to vote. But uh, I hate Jimmy Dore too much to actually give a shit about universal health care for the rest of America. And then we got Richard Midhurst, who just played a clip about AOC saying that Julian Assange and Edward Snowden and reality winner and Daniel Hale do not deserve pardons. They don't deserve a pardon. AOC voted for the Patriot Act. She doesn't think Assange and Snowden deserves pardons. Tulsi Gabbard does. So I guess poor uh, Desi Lydic, you know. What do you think about that, huh? AOC is fucking up, ain't she? AOC is fucking up big time. What kind of a lame answer is that? You heard the hesitation in her voice, right? There, there should be no hesitation when answering a question like that. No, <laughs> no hesitation whatsoever. It's, it's an unequivocal yes. I believe they should be oh. pardoned. The yes. Oops. Persecution, the the witch hunt, the political witch hunt, should cease immediately. Considerations and concerns. What? Oh, Richard Medhurst. Okay, Jacobin, you're up. During the pandemic, we need Medicare for all more desperately than ever. Yes! It's criminal. He's on our Democratic side. Democratic leadership continues to oppose it. Everyone on the left criminal. agrees with that. Criminal. But to understand how the Democratic and Republican establishments can succeed in continuing to block such a basic reform, we need to avoid the dangers of voluntarism. The idea that we can achieve important political results by just wanting them badly. Ah, but if we really, really want them. It's important that we win this fight. But to do that, we need to start with a realistic understanding of why we're losing. Yeah, Jimmy Dore, you stupid fucker. God damn it. So volunteerism, you, if you're a citizen, if you're a peasant citizen, a pothead comedian, a Joe Blow nobody... Do not give your opinion to the politicians about wanting universal health care. Shut the fuck. Do what Emma Vigilant and Sam Cedar tells you to do. Just shut the fuck up. You don't have health care. It's Jimmy Dore that said it, okay? Yeah, it's a great idea, but fucking Dore? You can't let America get universal health care because Jimmy Dore come up with a good idea. You can't allow, you can't allow that to happen. So, yeah, that's volunteerism, right? Citizens, don't voluntarily tell politicians your thoughts. Don't voluntarily tell them, I guess, we need to be forced to. Volunteerism, what the... You, God! Richard Medhurst, can you... The fact that you are the richest nation on earth and your politicians are still denying you health care and still denying you direct cash payments is outrageous. <laughs> this is unheard of in other countries. <laughs> if AOC thinks Medicare for all can't pass, why did she bother running for Congress then? Two times. Well, just to appear on the cover of Vanity Fair? Do your bloody job or get out. You're a public servant. These people, they got billions of dollars to come and bomb Arabs, but you can't pass a stimulus check? You can't give your own people health care? What kind of barbaric bullshit is that? The whole goddamn political class in Washington is the most disgusting, corrupt sack of shit that I ever laid my goddamn eyes on. You're incompetent at best and complicit at worst. The fact that you have so much political capital and popularity and influence and you still refuse to use that to call for protests and general strikes and rent strikes and hold Democratic Party leadership accountable shows that you are complicit. Don't sit there and act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Those are your words. That's what you said when you were running. You said that, not me, and now you're going to act like you don't know how to play politics all of a sudden? Oh, we can't do anything? You voted to give away trillions to the corporations. You threw away all your leverage with the CARES Act, and now you want to throw away the last bit of leverage that you got? So what if Pelosi loses her leadership? Let her lose it. A goddamn shoe is better than her. You burst on the scene by getting rid of Crowley, the number three, and now you're too scared to get rid of the number one? 
All we hear is the excuses be while millions of people are dying and suffering because they don't have health care, and you're going to sit there and act like there's no one better than Pelosi. You think you're going to get something more nefarious? She's the nefarious one. She's the whole reason you can't have a vote for Medicare for all. How can you vote for a war criminal, a woman who covered up torture and covered for George Bush and Obama, never mind denying you health care? Anyone voting for her being, or associated with her should hang their fucking heads in shame. And people think Jimmy Dore's being mean or acting out of bad faith. You know what's bad faith, man? Thinking that the working class are too stupid to understand your games. You know what's bad faith? Lying about your fucking campaign promises. You know what's bad faith? Saying that you're going to be different because you don't take corporate money, and then as soon as you get in, you start acting like corporate money and falling in line behind those who do. And all these hacks who call themselves leftists and progressives running cover for you are just as pathetic and fucking spineless as they come. Okay. Okay, then, Richard Medhurst. Let's go back to Sanity and Reason. Jacobin Magazine, you're up. Oh, oh. Say that it had all the suspense of the Soviet election, but... Honestly, there was probably more factional wrangling within the Brezhnev era power structure than at the top levels of the contemporary Democratic Party. Everyone on the left should be able to agree that Nancy Pelosi continuing to exercise any sort of power is a bad thing. But comedian and YouTube host Jimmy Dore has suggested that all of this reflects particularly badly on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, that... AOC should have taken the leadership vote as an opportunity to exercise some sort of leverage in a way that would advance the cause of Medicare for All. How does that work? Well, his argument is that she should have taken a tough negotiating position, demanding that Pelosi agree to schedule a vote on Medicare for All in the House of Representatives as a condition of supporting her re-election to the speakership. To hear some of Jimmy's most intense online supporters You'd think that if AOC had done this, the result would be that Medicare for All would become law. You'd think that after years of being one of the highest profile champions of Medicare for All on the national stage, AOC was revealing herself as a hypocrite, a sellout, at just the moment when she had a chance to make it a reality. <laughs> she can make it a reality. AOC voted for the Patriot Act. She's not for pardoning Assange and Snowden. Her very first vote was voting for Pelosi. All we need is 15 votes to change the thing. If we voted for Ilhan Omar, if we got anybody else, a shoe would be better than uh, Pelosi. You, it, it, that, that changes the entire power dynamic, but she's kissed Pelosi's ass. She's got in, right? She's got in. She's, she is part of the club. You're not part of the club. AOC's part of the club now. And now that she's part of the club, well, she is gaslighting. She is gaslighting. She is lying. Okay, okay. Now, to be fair to Jimmy Dore, I don't think even he thinks that things would have played out that way. So, yes for the Patriot Act, no for partying Assange and Snowden. You know who's opposed to, I want to say, the Patriot Act, but you know who's in favor of pardoning Assange and Snowden? So AOC is, AOC is wrong on Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, but Tulsi Gabbard is right. I just, I don't know if, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but I, I gotta say that. He knows it wouldn't have had the votes to pass even the House, never mind a Senate that will most likely be controlled by the GOP. His idea is this. There are currently well over 100 congressional co-sponsors of the Medicare for All bill. At least some of these people probably aren't serious about it. They're co-sponsoring to shore up their progressive credentials, but push came to shove, they wouldn't actually vote for it. So he thinks that having a vote would be a useful test. We'd see who was really supporting giving health care to their desperate constituents and who would ultimately side with the insurance industry. Nice, right, the exactly. The lines were drawn. Exactly, exactly. The target. Yep. His premise is almost certainly right in some cases. I'm sure there are at least some congressional Democrats who are ready to make the gesture of symbolically supporting an important reform but would think twice about enraging the donor class but his idea... And we got to protect that donor class. You know how important protecting that donor class. Jacobin magazine, is that what... I thought, what, weren't the Jacobins radicals? Like working class radicals of the French Revolution? Isn't that what the Jacobins were? Or were they were like, guillotine anybody who comes for the donor class? <laughs> oh my 
God, they're coming for the dinner class? We gotta step in front of, anyway, so, the, uh, force to vote. Everybody is for force to vote, okay? Everybody is for Jimmy Dore's idea. Some people are for the idea, and that's, you know, they don't have to go on, and David Dole, he didn't have to talk about the politics behind it. Some people say, I'm for the idea, but, you know, fuck that Jimmy Dore. That's Sam Cedar, Emma Vigilant, Ben Dixon, Anna Kasparian, and Francesca Fiorentina. And so we don't need to listen to them anymore. They are not progressives. Take their progressive crown, their progressive hat, and throw it in the, in the trash, throw it in the garbage. Sam Cedar, Emma Vigilant, Ben Dixon, Anna Kasparian, Francesca Fiorentina, and then Tim Black. I, you know what, Tim Black has still got some good to decorum. But I think he's against force to vote, and he's against Jimmy Dore. So Tim Black is, you know, Tim Black ain't no Nico House. I'll say that. Tim Black ain't no Nico House. So who's in favor of force to vote? Well, you know, Richard Medhurst. Julian Assange should be given fucking medals, all right, right. for what he exposed. Yeah, agreed. You seen the collateral murder video? You seen how they were gunning down Iraqi children? Oh yeah, considerations and concerns. What? AOC, you fucked up. This is bullshit. It is. I don't. I don't tolerate this. We're, this is not some random person that you're asking. You. This woman says she's a progressive. Okay. Claims to be different from the establishment. Yes. She is a lawmaker, whether she likes it or not. She is a member of this government. So Richard Medhurst, Jimmy and Steph, Ron Placone, Graham Elwood, David Sirota, they're in favor of force the vote, and they like Jimmy Dore. Bree Bree Joy, Lee Camp, Nico House, Crystal Ball, Daniel Dole, Rational National, Kyle Kalinske, Jink Ugar, Aaron Mate. Push back, right? Crystal Ball of Rising. Lee Camp of RT. Nico House of the House of Nico. Graham Elwood, David Sirota, Brewery Joy, Ron Placone, Jimmy Doris, Steph Zamorano. So these are the good people. These are the progressives you can trust. You can trust them. But not Francesca Fiorentina, Anna Casper, Sam Cedar, Emma Vigilant, Ben Dixon. They are not progressives. This is an obvious common sense idea whose time has come, and just because of their hatred for the person that thought of the damn idea, they're going to stop America. They're going to stop a movement. They're going to stop us from getting universal health care. And that ain't right, you know? Of this country that is going after Julian Assange, that is torturing him, that has vilified Edward Snowden, and all, all the other whistleblowers mentioned. I don't want to hear anything except a resounding yes. He shouldn't have to ask you that again. And even the way he asked it was kind of weird. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to get you to endorse him. No, no, why sh you should be endorsing Julian Assange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the idea for finding out who these people are collapses the second we start to think about it. Let's assume for the sake of argument that AOC has enough leverage to force Pelosi to allow a vote on Medicare for all. She almost certainly does not have that kind of leverage, because why would she? It's not as if Pelosi was in a close leadership race where she desperately needed the votes of a few leftists. But whatever. It is a close. It's just 15 votes. That's what happened. Why would anyone who was co-sponsoring it vote against it? Assuming that these insincere co-sponsors can do basic arithmetic, they know it was perfectly safe to vote for it because if literally every single co-sponsor voted for it and they somehow conjured up another 100 votes out of thin air, it would still be defeated in the House. And that's not even mentioning the existence of the Senate or a president-elect who openly said on the campaign trail that if it did somehow pass both houses, he'd veto it. So why the hell wouldn't anyone 
willing to symbolically co-sponsor Medicare for All, thinking it wouldn't go anywhere, also cast a symbolic vote for Medicare for All, again, knowing that it wouldn't go anywhere. So that way in 2022, when they, uh, the primary opponents, they can primary the people that were against universal health care during a pandemic. This is just, this is politics 101. You put the issue up and say we fought for universal health care so the people that voted in favor of it will get reelected and then the people that fought against universal health care will get, you know, demoted, rightfully so. This idea makes no sense. It does make sense. So why are so many people in Dora's audience so willing to believe it and to denounce one of the only real solid social democrats in the House over this? It's not just Jimmy Dore, it's Steph Zimmerano too, okay? The underlying disease is voluntarism. The idea that we can will important political outcomes into existence. Put a different way, voluntarism is the idea that anything is possible, regardless of the political terrain we're fighting on. Voluntarism is, you know, if you live in America, if you can dream it, you can do it. Where there's a will, there's a way. Voluntarism. It's just a fancy thing. You just want it, and then you get it. You think that's all you need is just to want it. If you want it bad enough. <laughs> Everybody should be endorsing Julian Assange and, and yelling and, and shouting and screaming for his freedom. <laughs> right. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Like, the guy exposed war crimes. Have you seen what WikiLeaks has published? I mean, do you even know what we're talking about? They know damn well. They know damn well. This is bullshit, man. He should not have to ask you again. You know what that reminded me of? Did you even know what we talking here, about? What we just heard? It's kind of like, I I imagine, you know, well, not imagine, we've seen this. It's like you'll hear, you'll hear Trump or, or some uh, conservative, right? They'll, they'll be asked up front, like, whether they think it's okay for cops to shoot unarmed young black men in the street. And, and they're going to say no, because they know they're being filmed, they know they're in public. And then what comes next? But, in this case, then, no, there ain't no fucking but. There ain't no fucking but. All right? you, you shouldn't, man, if it's coming to a point where we gotta ask you that thing twice, and we, we gotta... And if anything is always possible, that only personal motivations explain why things happen the way they happen. Voluntarists attribute failures and losses not to larger structural factors, but to the losers having not fought hard enough to win in the first place. Interesting. You know, ask it so bluntly, there's an issue here. You should be making the goddamn case for them. You're a fucking lawmaker. I mean, like, what planet are you living on? Why is... Pluto. I, I don't. I don't understand this. I really don't. I really don't. You know, to me, this is a bullshit answer. Th this is nonsense. You should be using your platform. You're one of the most popular uh, congresswomen in the country, youngest congresswoman to ever be elected. Enormous, powerful reach. Use it. Fucking use it. What, what are you doing? I mean, if you're not going to use it for this, right? then what would you use it for? Hmm? You, you don't think... You don't think this witch hunt against Julian Assange poses a grave threat? Because, you know, we've been hearing for the last years how Donald Trump is a fascist and he needs to be uh, removed from the Oval Office and you got to swallow Joe Biden because fascism is so bad, yet they're totally fine with their own democratic brand of authoritarianism and cracking down on dissidents, and even if they're on the other side of the goddamn Atlantic, right? This is not good enough. I, don't, I do not tolerate this. I'm sorry, I don't tolerate this. You don't apologize. I don't accept this. Don't accept it. I'm sitting here, I'm not listening to that. This is not okay. <laughs> I saw what they were doing in that kangaroo court. I was there. So I'm not wow. tolerating this. You're not going to fucking convince me otherwise. No. And she is part of that government. She is an American congresswoman. It's her fucking responsibility to do some shit when she's going to come around and say that she's different from the establishment. 
show me that. Grow a fucking spine. What are your concerns behind Assange? What, you don't want people to know that American troops are murdering Iraqi civilians? What, what concerns are there here, exactly? So there you go. Richard Medhurst versus Jacobin. I know we were talking about two different things, but I liked it.